actual name. Um, reflexive property seems very uh, unuseful, the fact that A is equal to A, um, but it will come into play a little bit. Uh, symmetric, you can reverse the order. It doesn't matter whether you say A is equal to B or B is equal to A. Uh, the transitive property and the substitution property are two that we're going to use uh, quite frequently. Okay. Um, so if A is equal to B and B is also equal to C, then of course we can say A is equal to C. You'll see how that works here in a minute. Um, and then substitution, you can, you can substitute um, in other expressions. Uh, and then another one that we also need to know is the distributive property. Okay, you know the distributive property, but we'll see how that's used here in a second. So let's look at example one. It asks us to solve for x and then justify each step, okay? Solve for x and justify each step. So, I mean, I, I think looking at this, uh, pretty much everybody can figure out how to do this, right? If we're given that the measure of angle AOC is 139 degrees and our diagram is labeled as such, we can solve for x, right? Because if we add those two pieces together, they're going to give us the 139 degrees and then we just have to use our process to solve for x. But if we set this up in kind of a proof form because they want us to justify each step, um, we have one column, I prefer two column kind of proofs, so in one column we have our statement and then in the other column we have our reason. So I'm going to split it up that way. Okay, so our first statement, you always start with the given, okay? The measure of angle AOC is 139 degrees, and the reason is because it's given to us. That seems rather um, obvious and not essential, but you still have to put it there, okay? So our next step, I kind of talked through it just a second ago. If we add those two pieces together, then we get the entire angle. So uh, we're going to say that the measure of angle AOC is equal to the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC. And the reason for that, you may have seen this before, you may not have um, but it has a name. It's called the angle addition postulate. It's the angle addition postulate. Okay? Um, and that just says that if you split the angle into two pieces, these two pieces together make up the entire angle. Okay. Now we can put in our specifics. Okay. We know that the measure of angle AOC is 139 degrees. We know that the measure of angle AOB is X degrees and BOC is 2X plus 10 degrees. What do we do right there? We substitute. Okay. That was substitution. We replaced those symbols with numbers and expressions. Then we can proceed to solve. Okay, we need to combine like terms. So we can add the x and the 2x to give us 3x plus 10. That is because of addition. And we move the 10 to the other side. And we do that using subtraction. Okay. 
And then the final step is to solve for x by dividing by 3. We get that 43 degrees is our value for x. And to figure that out, we used division. Now, sometimes people get a little thrown off by, well, what exactly am I putting in the reason column? Um, the reason column is how did I get from the previous step to my current step? Okay, how did I get from the previous to the current? Um, so from here to here, we added the x and the 2x to get the 3x, so that's why we put addition property on that line. Okay, um, so keep that in the back of your mind as we're doing this. All right, uh, there's a similar problem. Um, they're labeled as practice, so I want you to fill in the missing reason. I give you all the statements, um, but I want you to fill in the missing reasons uh, for this proof. Um, so you are trying to, once again, solve for x, uh, but this time we're told that LM bisects KLN. We are told that AC is equal to 21 units. We're not told what type, inches, meters, whatever. Um, so the first statement that we have there is that AB plus BC is equal to AC. Well, the reason why we can say that is something called the segment addition postulate similar to the angle addition postulate. You can break a segment into pieces, and obviously they together make up the whole. Okay, well, we've got to be able to uh, solve for y. So that means we need to substitute those expressions in there. So AB is 2Y, BC is 3Y minus 9, and AC, we were told, was 21. So that is strictly substitution. And you don't have to write out property every time you can abbreviate it. Okay. Well, we need to combine like terms. We need to combine the 2y and the 3y over there. So that's 5y minus 9 is equal to 21. So that's addition. And we need to move that 9. Well, to do that, we have to add again. So we have another addition pro uh, property. And then divide by 5 to find that y is 6. So that is our division property. Okay, so now that we know what y equals, uh, I want you guys to find the actual measures of AB and BC and confirm. The commutative property says that it doesn't matter what order you do things in, okay? Now, that is not true about everything, but we do have a commutative property for addition and one for multiplication, okay? Um, what the commutative property does is it changes the order. So think about um, when you commute somewhere, you're changing your location. You're going somewhere else when you commute somewhere. So that's the same thing that happens here. Commutative property means you change the order in which you add things or in which you multiply things. Um, and it is equivalent. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you multiply A times B times C or if you multiply A times C times B, or for that matter, you could do C times A times B. Uh, you can do it in any order. You're going to get the same result. Now, the associative property um, says that uh, it doesn't matter how you group things, uh, it's equivalent. So we have one for addition and we have one for multiplication. Um, so when you're trying to remember what that means, think about who you associate with. If 
people in your group of friends. Um, so we could group B and C together, add those together first, and then add A, or we can add A to B together and then add C, and we're going to get the same result. It's just sometimes it's easier to do one way as opposed to another. Um, so let me give you a couple of examples of this. If we are given these two problems, and this isn't on your paper, you can just add it there at the bottom. Um, if I ask you to add, or, or to find the result, 3 plus 10 minus 11, there are actually three different ways that you can go about doing that. There may be more than that, but um, I just want you to find the uh, answer three different ways. So let me show you uh, here with, with the first one, and then I'll let you do the second one. Okay? So you could do it in the exact order that you see right there. Um, you can add 3 and 10 and get 13 and then subtract 11, so the result is 2. You could change the order. You can do 3 minus 11 plus 10, and that will give you negative 8 plus 10, which also gives you 2. Or, let's see here, we could do um, 10 minus 11 plus 3. So that would give us negative 1 plus 3, which is still 2. Now I have a feeling there's like one or two more ways that we could have uh, done that. So we here we were kind of using the commutative slash the associative property um, as well to show that it doesn't matter what order we do that in, the result is still always 2. Now, I don't know about you, I'd probably favor the first way, because the first way I don't have to deal with negative numbers. Um, but the other two really aren't, aren't that difficult either. Okay? We can do the same thing with this multiplication problem. If we're trying to find the result of negative 4 times 6 times 5, we could do it that way, which would give us what, negative 24 times 5, which is negative 120. Or we could do negative 4 times 5 times 6, which gives us negative 20 times 6, which is negative 120. That was easier, that was easier for me to figure out that one than the first one. 20 times 6 is easier than 24 times 5. Or we could do 6 times 5 times negative 4, which is 30 times negative 4, which is still negative 120. So if I had the choice of doing this problem without a calculator, um, I would probably reorder it to one of the uh, second two ways. Um, I would either do it negative 4 times 5 times 6 or 6 times 5 times negative 4 um, because 30 times 4, 20 times 6, that's much easier to do in your head as opposed to 24 times 5. Alright, so 